more, younger, smaller, lighter, fuller, tighter, thinner, softer. It really works. Portrayal of women in the media has created and continues to create gender stereotypes. Girls and women are morphing themselves to meet cultural ideals. Throughout media theories, we learned about the numerous techniques that can be used to draw our attention to reality television and advertisements, and theories that can be applied to explain our fascination. The bulk of beauty advertisements, both print and commercial, bombard females with an image of an ideal beauty that cannot be attained by a majority of women. We believe that the media suggest a woman's most important values should be their beauty, sexuality, and youth, instead of focusing on education or leadership. This leads women to attaching self-value and self-worth to the way they look. In addition, we examine the impact that reality television and beauty advertisements have had on women and girls' body image, pride, morals, and behavior. How have both shaped women's perceptions of beauty and sexuality? We will analyze this using a number of concepts and theorists, including reification, the Frankfurt School, Androjevic, Marie and Ouellette, Foucault, Marx, and Baudrillard. The reification of beauty has crystallized an image of beauty that girls are raised to idolize. This beauty is fashioned as a norm, tall, thin, toned, with long hair, perky breasts, and around behind. Supermodels, tall, slender, usually African-American, because I'm African, high cheekbones, you know, like them African girls you always be seeing in the malls, high cheekbones. Inferences connecting this beauty to our own model. Through watching the documentary Generation M by Thomas Keith, we were educated on how misogyny, the hatred of women, has been accomplished through turning women into sexual objects or second-class citizens. Young girls and teenagers are looking at mainstream celebrities as their role models, who perpetuate the idea that female empowerment comes through their appearance and sex. Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears, and Jennifer Lopez are examples of women extremely prevalent in our pop culture that have the power to influence others. But how are they doing this? By being scandally clad and singing about being promiscuous, they are sending girls the message that the way for women to be powerful is to exert a sexual power. However, this is not real and true empowerment. These types of pulp cultural role models perpetuate the idea that women should see each other as rivals. John Baudrillard argues that media stimulate the real rather than represent it. What we watch on television is supposed to represent our reality, but when it doesn't, it becomes our reality. Baudrillard expressed this notion saying that no one has ever known an unmediated world. All we have are ways of imaging it. The beauty industry has invested interest in women feeling bad about themselves and buying products to improve or alter their appearances. It's funny to see the ways in which women have changed in appearance over the years. But if you look at the way the TV images of women have changed, you can't help but notice the stark differences between the depiction of young women then Yeah, she may look all nice and innocent, but I'm not buying it. The images that are presented in advertisements, whether in print or on television, are able to reach the widest possible audience as the literacy doesn't pose a barrier to understanding these messages. Since media is so pervasive, the widespread misrepresentation of women and stereotypes reach everyone and can have lasting effects even if we do not consciously notice it. Author Margaret Maitland explains that when women view ads showing female models that embody an idealized, homogenized view of beauty, they tend to be less satisfied with their own appearance. The medium's prevalence, regardless of content, creates itself as a significant force in shaping women's reality and body image. As McLuhan would say, the medium is the message. This also relates to the notion that the media creates domination, an idea presented by the Frankfurt School. Whether it is evident or we are unaware, this domination conceals reality. In everyday life, women are target audience for beauty products and clothing. However, we do not often analyze the image, images being presented to us or take them seriously. Eventually, this causes a kind of soft domination that influences our ideas of what perfection is and essentially creates a guide. Girls get the message from very early on that what's most important is how they look, that their value, their worth depends on that. And boys get the message that this is what's important about girls. We get it from advertising, we get it from films, we get it from television shows, video games, everywhere we look. 
As consumers, we need to be more aware of the larger picture of reality that advertisements present to us. Women's obsession with the body has cultivated and perpetuated by the advertising image to sell products and only shows a very narrow idea of beauty. It's no surprise that dieting has become a cultural norm for women. Counting calories, weighing oneself on a scale, working out to avoid feeling bad about eating a slice of cake, has all become part of being a female. It seems almost impossible for any girl or woman to be happy with their physical appearance right now. 27% of Canadian middle school girls have been reported to have eating disorders. 60% of those were in grades 7 and 8 and have tried dieting to lose weight. 90% of women interviewed saw themselves as overweight or under and 80% of those said that their breasts were too big or too small, while 31% believed that their skin was too dark, and finally, 27% disliked their hair color and texture. In Fiji, being a larger woman meant you had status in society. Three years after television was introduced in 1995, 11% of girls were vomiting to lose weight. Marie and Ouellette argue that an unstable text may encourage viewers to test out their own notion of real the ordinary and the intimate against the representation before them. Being exposed to Western beauty ideals, reality television and cosmetic and beauty advertisements change the way that women define beauty. The fractured female category is formed through popular culture and affects the way women perceive themselves. Women feel that they need to alter their body to fit into the media created norm. Why do people decide to be on reality TV? This was a question posed by Murray and Willette and can be interpreted in various ways. Some women have been seeking attention, others may be doing it for money, which is related to Mark's theory. These people just want their 15 minutes of fame to make themselves some cash. Women on reality TV are portrayed as vulnerable objects used for entertainment on the show. The producers will almost always choose the candidate who seems the most outgoing and who will do anything possible for the spotlight. Women who decide to be on reality TV are most definitely going to put themselves out there. It's the only reason they're there even if it's in an inappropriate manner, they'll make sure they get that spotlight. Unfortunately, a need for attention is the largest factor in why people decide to be on TV. And even more disappointing, the most memorable female participants are most likely to be the ones who are viewed in an undesirable light. So now we're going to look at a study done by Danielle Stern that highlights the female body image. She looks at the television program, The Real World, that of the series of Key West. It focuses mainly on the women female cast versus the male female cast, which is brought up in her study. It focuses on how women's body parts and how this interpretation either conflicts with it or similar with their own bodily experiences that of young women as viewers. She linked her studies to that of Foucault's, who argues how narratives in the reality television program, that of the real world, have long been of interest in accessing the individual subjectivity experiencing in the reflection of the past. The study concentrates on how society and the media are constantly concentrating on the fractured female, which is shown by Danielle Stern's study. It also demonstrates how women are trying to look like someone that they obviously cannot become. In this particular television program, in the real world Key West, that of Paula. Paula, 2006 real world Key West star, told her story of how she suffered from the disease at an early age. About 12 to 14 when I just knew how skinny I was and my body wasn't changing and I wasn't looking how other girls were looking. Because these women have struggled with eating disorders, which is something that is very common in today's day, women try to be like the people that they see on television. And with these two women, they took a very difficult way to becoming the person that they wanted to be. The examples of Demi Lovato and Paula are that of the fractured female exhibited by Danielle Stern. Advertising's power has a sensational impact on the way women compare themselves to the photoshopped, technologically modified images that we are supposed to accept as the real. Ad advertisements rarely represent women as the real life person, and an artificial images are created to affect the expectations and perceptions of both genders of the female and male bodies. Women, we want to be like the technologically altered images, while males want their women to be these people. As for the rest of you, Brad has 19 roses to hand out. 10 of you will be going home tonight. I wish you all the best. And if you're ready, here's our bachelor. In the TV show The Bachelor, the idea of women seeing each other as rivals is the main subject of entertainment. Whether it's between the women in the bachelor house or the female viewers at home, there's a continuous sense of rivalry between women. 
The viewers at home judge the women on TV foremost for their appearance. In shows like The Bachelor, there's a heavy portrayal on how the women cannot get along with each other and will stab each other in the back to get what they want. These shows only serve as a way to perpetuate stereotypes such as women are overly emotional or women are obsessed with relationships and that women should be thin and sexy in order to succeed. Author Rachel Dabrowski defines reality television as participants producing identities in line with the logic and rules sanctioned by the show's producers and directors. Many scholars study the idea that surveillance in reality TV is an institution that organizes and constantly monitors individuals while classifying them into categories. One of these categories is that of the fractured female. Using a Marxist analysis, when looking at a model in an ad, you don't see what's behind the product. People are simply looking at the physical aspects, the body, hair, eyes, and smile, and are not seeing the impacts on the woman's individual life. In reality, there are other mental, physical, and emotional aspects involved in the presentation of this model, such as photo editing programs, airbrush pictures, diets, and health conditions such as anorexia or bulimia that could all have a part in presenting this image or product to the public. An ad for Victoria's Secret, for example, shows a woman's body with the caption, All You See Is Curves. This portrays the idea of how women are often defined as objects for the male gaze, which according to author Soot Jally is reflected in ads in four different ways. As a symbol or interchangeable stand-in for the object, as an object to be viewed, as an object to be used, or as a fragmented object made of separate components, not tied together in any coherent way to create a personality. Throughout this semester, we were educated on different theorists and theories and methods that can apply to that of reality television and advertising. Through the studies of reification, the Frankfurt School, André Yevick, Marie and Wallet, Foucault, Marx, and Baudrillard, we demonstrate the relationships between these theories and that of the media. It is unfortunate that women choose to obsess over the ideal body image. This is a fairly large population of women who are willing to take this obsession to a very drastic level. The examples have been used to give insight to the theories and relate to the prevalent media that are affecting our everyday lives. Reality television has a greater impact than imaginable, and the way we perceive the people on these types of television shows have the real effect on people's everyday lives.